Ms. Giovanni from Student Success, and I'm here to give you some information regarding the OSSLT. I'm hoping to answer some of the questions you may have about the literacy test, which you will be writing next week. So next slide, please. So what is the OSSLT? The OSSLT is the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test. It is a ministry mandated assessment that tests your reading and writing skills. So this is a government test. It is a graduation requirement. So you will need to fulfill um, the, you will need to be successful on the OSSLT in order to complete your graduation. Next slide, please. So when are you writing the test? The test is taking place next week. So between May 2nd to 9th. You will be assigned one of those days to complete the test. So if you are in a grade 10 class um, or a grade 10 student, your teacher should tell you which day you are writing the test. If you are a grade 11 student, you will be receiving an email to tell you which date you will be writing the test. If you are an online student, you will have an opportunity to complete the test on a separate day and you'll be receiving an email notification as well. Next slide, please. So where are you writing the test? Everybody will be writing their test in the library on your assigned day. So you will be using, this is an online test, so you will be using the library desktop computers and additional laptops to write the test. Next, please. So how long is the test? The test is comprised of two sessions. Each session is 60 minutes long. So you'll be writing in period one, then you will have a 15 minute break, and then you'll be writing again for another hour. So it will take up, for most people, it will take up periods one and two. Next slide, please. So the format of the test. So it is slightly different. This online version is slightly different than it used to be um, in previous years. This test has been going on for a very long time. So this test um, is fully online. You will be using school computers or netbooks to complete the test, as I previously mentioned. And you will log in, this is important, you will log in using your OEN number. So that is, it's, that stands for Ontario Education Number. That is the number that you are identified as. Um, so no matter where you go in Ontario, and no matter which school you change to, you will still have that OEN number. So that's how they identify you. You are not identified to the government when they mark the test. You are not identified by your name. You are identified by your OEN number. You can find that on your MyPath or on any report card that you receive. And you will need that in order to log into your test. So make sure that you know your OEN number or bring it with you that day. So the format of the test. So it starts off with an introductory session or a minds on just to get you into the mindset of the test. Then you will have session A for 60 minutes. You will have a 15 minute break. Then you will have session B for 60 minutes. And then there were, there's a brief questionnaire for you to fill out that asks you about your reading habits, etc. Just to get an idea, it collects data for the government about your habits and background, etc. Next slide, please. So in session A, getting a little more detailed here as to what to expect on the test. Session A has a real life narrative, which is basically a fancy way of saying a, a short story. So there'll be a story for you to read and there will be seven multiple choice questions which follow that. Then you will have an information paragraph with six multiple choice uh, questions to answer after you read the paragraph. Then there's a news report for you to read and you will have to answer five multiple choice based on that news report. And there's an open response question which is basically a short answer question of 100 words and it'll give you the amount of space and it will tell you how many words you have used as you type. Then after the break you go to session B and session B starts off with a dialogue which is a conversation between people that you will have to read and then you will have to answer five multiple choice questions. Then there is a section about writing and editing skills. So it perhaps, uh, for example, it might give you a question that is incorrect and it will tell you, it will ask you to correct the question. It will ask you to perhaps 
um, it will give you a paragraph and it would say what is the topic sentence of this paragraph so you will have to answer multiple choice questions on that based on reading and writing and grammar skills then there's an opinion piece so this is the longest part of the test it is an opinion piece where it's about 500 words that you will have to write and you, it's a multi-paragraph response so they will ask you various questions um, they're usually pretty easy uh, in terms of finding ideas because they they try to make these opinion pieces based on your life as a high school student so in previous years they have asked questions such as um, is it useful for students to have a part-time job and you would have to answer yes or no your own opinion um, should Phys Ed be mandatory every year, yes or no? So you would have to answer that. Another question in previous years is, um, should students have to participate in extracurricular activities every year? So something like that. It usually has something to do with um, the life of a student or something that you should be able to identify with pretty quickly. Now, next slide, please. Some students are coming to me and saying, is the task difficult? Well, I've been helping with this test for many, many, many years, and it's, I find that they've actually taken out sections, so it is shorter than it has been in previous years. And one thing that I always tell students is that the test is based on expectations from the grade nine curriculum. So not just grade nine English, everything about the grade nine curriculum. So um, it will, you should be prepared because most of you, I think all, all of you in that for that matter, have uh, grade nine credits. So it is based on the grade nine curriculum. So you should be okay. Most students, the feedback I get from students is that they find they find they find rather the test to be very manageable for them. Next slide, please. Another question I hear often is, what do I do if I run out of time? Well, the test is actually designed to give students ample time to complete all sections. If you have an IEP or an ELL designation, you are entitled to accommodations and extra time. And the good thing is, this year, additional time will be provided to anyone who needs it. In previous years, it used to be only if you had um, an IEP or an ELL designation, but this year, Anyone who needs extra time can use extra time. So rest, rest assured, you will have plenty of time to complete the test. Next slide, please. Another question, another, uh, question that I, I hear often are, is, are there any special features on the test that I can use for help? And this is one of the, the good things about writing an online test. There's so many good tools for you to help you in the completion of the test. So there is a listen function. So if you bring headphones that you could plug into the computer, you can listen to it and it will actually read out um, certain parts of the test for you. You can zoom in or out. There is a line reader where it, where it blocks off just certain sections as you read. There's high contrast mode. There's a text box and it gives you the word count so you'll know how much you have typed. There's split screen mode, which I highly recommend that everyone uses. So you can put the reading passage on one side and the questions on the other side so that you can see everything simultaneously. There's also, there are also annotation tools. So there are things such as a highlighter, um, think of a section to write little notes. Um, there's so many different things that you can use. There's a progress bar so you can see how far you've come and how much more you have left to do in that section. There's a rough note section and you can flag a question. So if you have a difficult question that's taking up too much time and you want to just move on, you can flag that question and then move uh, and go back to it later. So there are a lot of very valuable tools uh, on this online format. Next slide, please. So what happens if you fail the test? I have to say this, I have uh, in the about, I think it's been 20 years that I've been helping with the OSSLT. I actually marked one of the, the very first OSSLT, I marked it in Toronto, and I've been doing this for a long, long time, and I have never, ever seen a student not graduate because of the literacy requirement. There's so many safeguards in place to ensure that you can still get this literacy requirement even if you fail the test initially. So if you are unsuccessful, you will have an opportunity to retake the test 
in grade 11. Uh, those of you, we actually have grade 11 students who will be writing again. And so they have another chance to write, to get this, um, fulfill the expectation. And another, and even if you fail it the two times, if you are unsuccessful twice, or you were absent one of the times, you can enroll in the OLC, OLC course, and that will fulfill your literacy requirement for graduation. So the OLC course is the Ontario literacy course that you can take in grade 12, and that fulfills the literacy requirement for you, so you can still graduate despite your um, achievement or lack of achievement on the test. Um, next slide, please. So immediately after students write, they often ask, when am I going to get the results? So tests are marked by EQAO, which is based in Toronto. It's the government agency that runs these um, standardized tests. And it usually takes a couple of months for the results to come in. So I'm thinking that it is very likely, we were told in a previous meeting, that the results should be in in June. And we will keep you informed. So results should be ready uh, in June, but we'll keep you informed as we get information from EQAO. Next slide, please. So what can you do to prepare? So like I said, the test is based on grade nine curriculum, but it's, it's a very good idea to familiarize yourself uh, with the content of the test and the type of questions. There are actual practice tests available so you can see the format so it won't be unfamiliar to you when you actually go to write next week. So your best resource is the OSSLT prep site. It's on LMS, so it's an actual class that you choose in the waffle on LMS, and it contains tips, videos, and the actual practice test from EQAO, which is modeled on the real test. You can also go to www.eqao.com, and that has a practice test for you to fulfill or to complete as well. And lastly, so what can you do if you have questions, and who do you ask? So you can ask me, Ms. Di Giovanni, in Student Success. You can ask your guidance counselor for questions. You can ask Ms. Danielowitz, who is uh, located in room 104. You can ask your resource teacher, uh, Ms. Walters uh, in particular, and you can ask Mr. Juba, your VP. So there are lots of people that you can ask, and so please do not hesitate if you have any questions. You can come to me and ask um, any one of those people um, if you have any questions about the test. I will be coming on again on Friday to give you some actual tips about the content of the test and things that we think will help you be more successful. So um, once again, please use those resources, check out the resources. If you have trouble locating these resources, please come to me, I'll help you find them and uh, we will see you on Friday where I will give you some additional information and tips for the literacy test. And uh, one more thing to remember, this presentation will be posted on the grade 10 and 11 LMS pages, so you can go back to it if you need more information or you'd like to review the contents of this presentation. So thank you very much, and we'll see you on Friday for some more tips.